Oh, it's kind of like wacky weather day today again. It's predicted as raining, when outside it was super sunny, and now it's cloudy. Oh, I can never win with this weather here, I guess. Read some interesting uh, news today too about drones and reporting. But uh, first, I guess all these videos I watched today were kind of entertaining. I don't know. Have you ever guys seen this video that was trending? It's really fast too. Something about um, what the world is about, but it's done in a very, I guess, artsy and entertaining way. I'll link it below, but um, just the style of it is holy. You must have like a, it must be made for people with low attention span or something like that. Makes me think of this type of communication style is necessary for the average person to not be afraid of drones afterwards. There's also this video about someone like the very first person jumping from a drone. So it looked like the person was climbing up the tower and then I guess it at was attached to the drone which flew him off of it and then from there he jumped off and it was like a skydiver. I don't know if I would personally ever do stuff like that but maybe that would be in a bucket list type of thing. It did make me think too, would you think stuff like this would be more or less likely to make people afraid or embrace like the drone technology like just from a regular public? I mean, in many ways, I think anyways, uh, entertainment stuff like this are necessary just because if people, all they see is all these fears of drones crashing into airplanes, reading news about it, hitting helicopters, killing thousands of people, then that's all that's going to be in their mind. But I guess the more stuff like this, in my opinion, I think it's, uh, I think it's a great personally. I mean, in this case too, it's a controlled environment and everything to my knowledge. Well, it's too bad missing all the drone shots of like this. Will the laws change in time for me to capture all that scenery? That is the question. Yeah, you guys posted an interesting comment too about uh, locally how I guess um, there's people that are concerned about a drone that is I guess snooping on people. I mean according to this uh, they're saying it's uh, going into people's properties really low below the house and I guess one of the main points was how um, apparently so I don't know if he's joking but he's saying that the drone was within like shotgun range so the guy could have shot it. It's interesting in the sense I know in other countries apparently uh, there are incidents like this like that's frequent where people I guess take guns and shoot drones but apparently that's just as bad like if you take a gun and you shoot a person's uh, property in that way. One thing I was thinking about too was kind of funny in a maybe in an ironic way is how a lot of people that don't fly drones compare drones to like cars and airplanes saying they should follow the exact same rules. So it made me think um if there was like say an airplane or even a car that drove really close to someone's property and they don't know what it is would people necessarily bring out a shotgun and shoot that car or airplane? <laughs> That's kind of funny. Okay, talk about drones again and scaring animals. It comes back every time around here, it comes down to the pets too in comparison. Should the pets be banned from the parks because they scare the animals in that sense? I mean, the whole thing about this again is just about uh, equal opportunity or equal treatment. Everything should be treated like in a similar fashion. I mean, again, if, uh, if you say drones scares animals is the reason to ban them, should that dog be banned too, as an example? Or same thing like with the shotgun. I mean, if people are willing to shoot drones with shotguns if they see it, are these guys shooting like cars and stuff too? I mean, the double standard is just kind of amazing when you think about it in many ways. Man, in many ways, this all makes me feel like I'm in elementary school or something where everyone reacts so emotionally and irrationally. I then read this uh, report from the AMA, I believe, and I basically released uh, data about drones and near misses, like in terms of reports. And it was kind of an interesting study, I thought. Uh, I came basically, it said, in terms of the uh, percentage of reports of uh, near miss or close calls, in terms of a drone, I guess, to things like an aircraft, uh, basically the percentage was still relatively low, despite the fact that the, uh, the hobby or the usage has been increased significantly. So like it says here, uh, in August 2015, uh, 764 sightings were reported. 27 of them were close calls, which is like 3.5%. And then when we jump all the way to February 2017, it says there was 1,270 sightings with 44 uh, close calls or near miss, which works out to about 3.4%. So when you think about it, uh, mathematically and all that, uh, it actually wasn't that much of a change despite the fact that, you know, the user base has increased a lot. If you think about that too, that's actually kind of an important piece of information because right now with the narrative here in Canada anyways, it's, you know, the more drone flyers there are, the more dangerous it is in terms of like, for example, the percentage of, I guess, like this report, it would be something along the lines of, instead of 3.4% kind of maintaining that percentage, they're saying it's as if it's now there's a 50% chance or whatever like in terms of uh, near, near miss reports and all that which just isn't the case. Like even from my experience when I see people flying people do it in a responsible way. 
But another important thing too, I think uh, this thing talks about, which a lot of people overlook, is context. Like these numbers need context. Like I know for the average people, like we're generally too lazy if we're not interested in say the hobby or whatever, we're too lazy to really find out what they are about. But in this case, it makes a good point in terms of uh, many of these reports it has no context in terms of what these sightings are about. Like here, for example, is that there was some reports saying, hey, there's something white at 200 feet. Or for example, something within uh, six to 40 feet above ground level. And uh, basically in context, like you don't really know what it is. Like maybe that person had permission, you never know. Again, at that distance, were they actually creating any kind of danger? This one about reporting to objects in general though is kind of funny or I don't know if it's sad in many ways um, because it's talking about how like in the past I guess uh, for people like pilots whenever or anyone in general when they see something in the air which they don't recognize like it's a UFO, <laughs> it's aliens or whatever like that so nowadays I guess the trend is it's a drone, it's a drone, it's a drone. So it even talks here uh, how many objects uh, people have reported other than drones and this was actually the, I don't even know if this is accurate but if it is Apparently, uh, there has been a report of someone saying there's something in the air, I guess, that resembled a dog. <laughs> okay. Wow, since when did dogs fly? I heard like um, when pigs fly as a, as a form of saying, but dogs in the air? Really? That's actually part of the report? I'm uh, waiting for the transfer minister to be afraid of this one in his nightmares now, dogs flying into airplanes. The other point of this was talking about uh, drones and how it's a good activity to get people engaged in the uh, industry because it has a combination of things like technology, um, you know, flying and all that stuff, like robotics, so it's kind of cool. But if people always see these reports as something dangerous or something deadly, then it's harder to get people in the hobby, like according to some uh, opinions out here. Everyone I bump into usually, uh, they're really fascinated by the drones, they want to get into it. Uh, usually the only barrier of entry is things like the cost. But at the same time, they're afraid to like, you know, crash them because they don't feel they have the skill necessary, so they're really hesitant. Like there's not many even schools or training around here that's reasonable. I mean, I researched like private schools, which didn't really teach you how to fly drones. They taught you more about aviation rules and all that, which in my opinion, it's a little bit of an overkill for someone to just want to fly in an open field here for fun. But at the same time, I saw like there's a seminar before, I believe like near the airport where they were doing like training for drones. Yeah, like in the airport. And apparently the cost of that was something like, I don't know, $1,000 or $2,000 for like a two to three day course. I mean, that in my opinion is more of the barrier to entry for a regular person. I'm speaking for myself anyways, I'm comfortable with technology. I mean, I do like, you know, computers and all that stuff. I hang around them all the time. I play video games. So for me, it's not an issue in terms of being scared of crashing and all that because I'm pretty comfortable with technology. And to me, it's just a matter of practice. That's why I went out and flew every single day. But with that said, it kind of brings me a full circle, like what I talked about earlier, like about the videos, like for entertainment and all. I think in many ways, that's what's necessary to uh, spread the message because people that aren't into the hobby, that's all they're fed because that's all people put out there mostly, like just uh, fear stuff. There's not enough things like the drone footage. I try my best like, to do the hiking and stuff, but I'm trying to be law abiding in terms of where I can get the footage. I mean, look at here, for example. I mean, everything is completely different. I, I think people would love to see scenery and stuff like this just to show again, the drone isn't crazy. It's not a weapon, but I just can't do it because of the loss. So it's just a matter of finding uh, different places to shoot. And that's why I usually like going out to different types of events and uh, cultures and all that, because um, you never know, you can learn different things, learn to appreciate them or vice versa. If they see a person like me who's, you know, they're not normally into like tech, then they can see the, some of the stuff I do and then they'll afterwards they'll embrace it. They'll be like, oh wow, this is actually pretty cool. I'm actually trying to think of what kind of uh, local events I can go actually, just for fun too. Actually, the only thing I researched was things like that retro gaming expo and all that. Although that's more tech people, so I would assume they're already comfortable with drones. But I usually try to look for uh, different cultural stuff as well. Alright, see you guys later.